okay so we'll start with the another standard another chapter review of financial information see 700 series audit 800 series audit only but special consideration under certain special requirement you have got 2000 series okay which has got 2400 which is not an audit but is a review audit gives you assurance the review gives you limited assurance that's why the language what you use is a negative in audit you say that the financial statements are true and fair we have obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence in review you say that nothing has come to our knowledge to conclude that there is no problem this is the language you express why because you did only a review no review means inquiries major majorly now SRS 2400 review of interim financial statement why because as per India 34 they have to prepare interim financial statements every quarterly reporting so this is what the auditor has to do quarterly independent reporting but by an independent auditor review let us see now what type of act engagement it is see in review you have got a limited assurance you are going to give limited assurance it's not that non-assurance Related services are non-insurance, agreed upon procedures and compilation. Only two things. Getting hold. Now it provides low level of assurance than the audit. Audit provides you high level of reasonable assurance. Investigation will provide you absolute assurance. Three types of investigation we discussed. What all those? You have got forensic accounting, investigation, due diligence. And review gives you limited assurance. Agreed upon procedures and compilation gives no assurance at all. The practitioner performs primarily inquiry and analytical procedures. See, I don't perform inspection, recalculation, reperformance, all those things, external confirmation. I'm not going to do that. I don't have that much of time. It's like a doctor's review. So, analytical procedure to obtain evidence about the financial statement as a whole. This SRE deals with the practitioner's responsibility in performing review where he is not the auditor of the entity. Maybe you, somebody, SEBI has told, they wanted to go for some, like say, some fundraising or something. Then SEBI said, okay, get your audited financial statement reviewed for past five years. Now, who are my auditors? I may not go to my existing auditor. I may get it from third party. So, SRE 2400 is applicable to you when you are not the auditor of the entity. Is the danger because you don't know much the much thing about the entity. What if you are the auditor of the entity? Yeah, 2410 is going to speak about it. It is a review by the independent auditor of the entity of the financial statement. You cannot be two different persons there. It is like condensed financial statement. You and the starter auditor and the interim auditor should be the same. Here it can be any standalone assignments. Objective of the practitioner is to obtain the limited assurance about the financial statement as a whole. Whether they are free from misstatement, it's like an audit only, but not a detailed audit, inspection, observation. So, you don't get a reasonable assurance here. You get limited assurance so that you can express a conclusion whether anything has come to your attention. You don't say that the financial statement are true or false. You don't give a positive opinion here. You give a negative opinion that nothing has come to my knowledge. That caused him to believe that the financial statements are not as per the framework. And then to report and communicate as required by the SRE. Uh, sorry, if you see, this is exactly very similar, very close to 200. Only thing is, this is limited, that is reasonable. Now, how to achieve the objective? Again, everything you are going to see here. It starts with ethical requirement. Question can come. Is ethical requirement applicable in review? Answer is yes. They asked you for some other, no? Compilation engagement, is it required? But in exam, they may come ask for this. They may tell you one particular assignment and say, what type of assignment it is? Is it ethical requirement required? Uh, then you have to say, this type of engagement is an ethical requ uh, review engagement. And for review engagement, ethical requirements are applicable. Ethical is applicable all. So engagement quality control review, just like 220. Client acceptance, 210. Performing engagement. Conclusion, reporting, and documentation. So, you understood the form, the way it proceeds. 
okay now compliance with ethical requirement yes you have to comply with the ethical requirements including the independence done so you have to be independent auditor when you are doing review because you are giving assurance even though it is not high level reasonable assurance it is a limited assurance so without being independent you cannot give such assurance followed no yes next see till now we have come across independence where what about the independence for your uh, 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 agreed upon procedures no what about your uh, independence for uh, uh, special purpose framework what about your independence for audit of single item of the financial statement single item single financial statement what about your audit uh, independence for that uh, condensed financial statement simple no baba it is audit only independence is must only there it is audit no they are the standards only so whatever is applicable in SA 700 series everything becomes applicable it is so independence is not applicable only in your non-assurance engagement assurance engagement limited assurance engagement reasonable assurance engagement everywhere you need an independence because you are giving assurance now engagement partner who is responsible for quality control engagement partner is responsible now what do you need to do related to the client acceptance yes first you need to agree to the terms of the engagement perform acceptance and conditions and check for preconditions not all the agreeing to the terms of the engagement you should agree with the management letter related to the engagement letter same like 210 on recurring you should evaluate the need for revision 210 also says no if the terms and conditions change if the nature of the organization change you need to revise your engagement letter he shall not agree change in the terms if there is no reasonable justification same 210 the terms of engagement change you should record that means i can say 210 whatever applicable is there it is applicable here also so 210 is applicable for auditor engagement that 800 series engagement and two four four two four double zero same means other things are also applicable but it is not same management responsibility precondition different different things are there but here in all the three places it is same now what about the client acceptance and relationship unless the law requires the practitioner shall not accept the review engagement if he is not satisfied there is no rational purpose for the engagement maybe client wants to avoid the audit and want to get a review and say our auditor reviewed it so you have to get into the rational purpose of engagement why they are going for this review who told them now if there is a significant limitation there is a unlikely that there is a rational purpose of the review and further when the law requires audit there is no question of review only no huh. in that sebi requires a review for quarterly reporting enough perfect but somebody comes walks to you and says sir get it reviewed please give your review opinion i don't why why should i be giving so there should be a strong reason for that that the review engagement would be appropriate in the circumstances like considering the circumstances auditor may audit may be more appropriate than review or if no assurance is required then compilation will be more relevant this this stands in between your audit and compilation job why do you want that limited assurance from me what you are going to achieve Are either you want to test yourself get properly tested or don't test yourself test only why you want to use my name and get that limited assurance understood no risk involved here so you have to check for the rational and the appropriateness he cannot comply with the ethical requirements he should not if you if you are not independent and all no i cannot accept this engagement if the required information is likely to be unreliable or unavailable better don't accept only if you know before only that information may not be reliable or management has in, you have got doubt on the integrity this is what we do in essay 210 also precondition no 220 and management or tcwg implies a limitation on the scope where i may have to disclaim almost if you see all these points are same like your essay except this this is one element which comes only here that you need to check the rational a and type of the engagement why which type is suitable here 
Okay. Now the third is preconditions you need to check whether the framework what the client is suggesting is it acceptable. Somebody comes and says, sir, you know, my SEBI has told you and I have to do India 34 itself. Is it okay? Okay. Obtain the management agreement that the preparation is there, Rob. I'm not going to do it. You have to establish the internal control and you have to provide me with all the information, explanation, and unrestricted access. Same. If the preconditions are not satisfied, you should discuss with the management and determine whether the matter can be resolved. If no, can I continue? And how to communicate the matter with the in the practitioner's report? Nothing big here. So I can say requirement number three is fine, except this rational part. Okay, no? Yes. Next, performing engagement. So first, start with the overall materiality because here limited assurance is involved. Obtain the understanding of the entity. Inquiry and analytical procedures are the one you are going to do here. Inspection and all to a very limited extent you will do or may not do also. Perform procedures for specific, like if need arises, then you perform specific procedures. Additional procedures on doubt or misstatement, obtain the written representation. First, you have to fix one overall materiality, apply this in designing and evaluating the results and he shall review the materiality if he becomes to know that any, he should have put something different, easy, same like our 320 only, they have repeated. Yes, you have to obtain the understanding of the entity, without that review you cannot do, you should know what type of risks are there. Design primarily includes your inquiry and analytical procedure to address the material items and focus on the areas where there is a possibility of a risk. Now there is one examination question on this inquiry. What does that inquiry includes? There is one question because this is a major activity. Inquiry may include matters such as making accounting estimates, complex significant transactions, commitments. I may inquire on that. Tell me more about this. How did you make that judgment? Identification of the related parties, suspected fraud, non-compliance with the law, subsequent events, going concern, contingency, write everything, no, SA 500 series there. Actions taken at the meeting of the owners, TCWG, committees and proceedings at other meetings that affect the information and disclosures. What actions taken which is going to affect my disclosures? Communications that the entity has received from the regulatory agencies for non-compliances. Matters arising in course of applying other procedures. Okay, these six elements primarily you may include in your inquiry. Tell me what happened about the regulatory. See again, again you are not going to verify certain things there. These matters you inquire and say, okay, did you receive any letter from the uh, department? You say no, finish. You say yes, I will go and say whether you have made sufficient provision for the litigation. Take it. Show me the record. I will call my expert, let me talk to your legal department. If there is a doubt, I will get into it. So now can you feel what type of assurance I am giving here? Limited, no? So somebody going through my audit report, audit financial report, I cannot say. It is just a limited assurance telling that, okay, the basic inquiries are done and nothing has come to our mind. It is like some, some parent come at the last moment and say, okay, my son wants to write the examination. Since you are a faculty, please see whether everything is okay. What we can do? We will ask some basic questions. We will look for the confidence, confidence level. And okay, we say based on our discussion, why are you coming now? You should have come six months back. Then we would have done a lot of tests. We could have verified. We could have wherever weak areas we could have addressed. At this point, is it, should you express any opinion? That's why rational becomes important. Huh? Others that parent is going to tell, you reviewed, no? My son or daughter. Huh, but it was a limited assurance. We didn't have that much of time to go in depth. So what we will say, based on certain questions I ask, because primarily I am going to ask questions. Did you study this chapter? Did you study this chapter? Tell me this, tell me that. Based on that, we give one, one limited assurance that, okay, nothing has come to us that your son or daughter may not fail. Understood the difference? Okay. Now, analytical procedure, you have to perform analytical procedure considering whether the data is adequate. So, some analytical procedure like the turnover ratio, stock ratio, etc. What is the importance of inquiry? 
it is a source of evidence of management intent otherwise you will never get that you come to know that okay what management is thinking corroboration is possible of this management intent through past history of carrying out intentions look no if they tell something look what they have done in the past reasons for choosing a particular course of action does it match with their vision and all per ability to pursue the course of action application of professional skepticism and obtaining understanding of the entity this can be another examination question or importance of analytical procedure it helps to obtain the understanding identify the inconsistency obtain a corroborative evidence for the inquiry and helps serves as an additional procedures that's why analytical procedures also no it will not give you that much persuasive evidence because it's just an imagination no you never verified it you think that okay sales is okay stock is okay that trust must be okay Okay, what you know? What did you verify? Did you do external confirmation? Nothing. So we both are, and in fact inquiry dangerous. Have you studied? Yes. Followed no. Both are dangerous thing. That's why we have to be careful here. Now procedures for specific circumstances, like related party. What I need to do? Be alert and look for significant transaction outside normal. Like when you do a review. At least you can look into some significant transactions. Something happened this year. Fraud and non-compliance. Look for indicators and request for the assessment of the management. Use of work of others. Satisfy that the expert work is adequate. In case of review of CFS, according to the accordingly modify the nature, timing, extent of the audit procedures. Uh, one minute. Huh? Ayo. Now going concern, check the review includes the consideration of the going concern, inquire the feasibility plan, same 570, consider the management response and evaluate whether the conclusion of the going concern is correct or not. This is also inquiry, primarily you are going doing with the inquiries here everywhere. These are all the specific procedures for 4 to 5 areas. This can be a, another question. And additional procedures when you have got a doubt. Here, no doubt. You have to do it mandatorily related to the related party, fraud, use of work of others, and the going concern. Four areas. So if you get a doubt that there is a material misstatement, if the auditor becomes aware that the matters may cause material misstatement, focus on obtaining sufficient evidence. Yes, if you find misstatement, get into a details. Additional audit procedure includes additional inquiry or other type of procedure like test of details or external confirmation. You decide that what you need to do, but SAAE sufficient evidence has to be obtained if you doubt that there is a misstatement. Unless this is the same, no, in audit also, we are supposed to obtain persuasive evidence, but the moment it is contradictory, I have got a doubt, I need to investigate that, I have to go deeper. Now, subsequent events on becoming aware that there are subsequent events, request the management to correct the misstatement first. No obligation to perform after his report. Same, my SA560 also same, same thing. Once you sign the report, there is no obligation for you. If such fact become known to you after, that means event that happened earlier, you come to know after you sign. Then discuss with the management, check the need for amendment, inquire how the management is going to address it. If the management is not going to do it, tell them not to issue to the third party, but if you are issued, take appropriate action. Same thing like SA560. Take representation from the management, another procedure of your uh, evidence. See, you primarily are doing inquiry, why inquiry is important, analytical procedure, certain specific procedures for four areas. Then if you get doubt, perform additional procedure, subsequent events, be careful. And representation that they have taken the responsibility, all transactions are recorded, they have disclosed related party fraud, no clear going concern, same no. Is, are we not individual we are talking here? In individual, I used to, every time I used to ask you, tell me which all standards requires me mandatory, no, uh, yeah, you see, everything here, going concern, subsequent event, commitments, non-monetary transactions, okay, something extra here. But all the standards, whatever required, you have to obtain here. And if they, you don't provide the representation, we discussed, discuss with the management, evaluate their integrity, effect on the reliability and take appropriate actions, which includes you with disclaimer or withdrawal. Same, SA 580. Now, conclusion. Evaluation of the evidence, 450. 
practitioner shall evaluate whether he has obtained sufficient appropriate evidence else perform the additional procedures if he is not able to obtain he should discuss with the management on the limitation as a scope by because he could not get the evidences now forming of the conclusion he should form in forming the conclusion he should consider the impact of uncorrected misstatements sa 700 also see, speaks same thing you have to check whether as per the framework to do that what first you see whether there is material misstatements and check the qualitative aspect check whether it is fair check whether uh, material transactions have been framework has been disclosed uh, like this check the uncorrected misstatements have been corrected qualitative aspects of the accounting policies and practices management bias overall presentation is as per the framework and they underlie the transactions and the fair presentation similar to ss 700 you remember contents Yes. Now, unmodified opinion. If you form an unmodified opinion, sorry, not opinion, conclusion on the financial statement, and you have to practice huh? this language to come, no? Unmodified conclusion. You can't say opinion there. When he has obtained the limited assurance that nothing has come to his attention, because they may ask you to draft one para, that you have to write, no, this language, that nothing has, I'll show you in QA also, there may be there. Nothing has come to the conclusion that believe that the financial statements are not prepared as per the framework. So, what do you need to say? In audit, you have to say the we have got a reasonable assurance that the financial statements are as per the framework. No, here you have to say that nothing I have come to know that bring come to your attention that to make me believe that the financial statements are not as per the framework. When you have to give modified opinion, so you should give the modified opinion. When he has gathered the evidence and there is a financial statement is materially misstated, or he is unable to obtain the evidence and, and he believes that it must be misstated. So, same and type of opinion depends upon type pervasiveness and uh, materiality. Same story, material but pervasive qualified, material and pervasive adverse or disclaim. It becomes like a revision class type of thing. No? Uh, now, withdrawal from the engagement, yes, you need to withdraw if below two conditions are present, that due to the limitation on the scope, you think that you are not able to obtain the evidence and the possible effect is pervasive. That means they have restricted you for reviewing. And you think that you are going to give a disclaimer opinion, then better withdraw, no, why you are staying there. And withdrawal is possible under the applicable law. If not possible, stay, give disclaimer, and in other matter paragraph, you tell why you are giving disclaimer. Now express the unmodified conclusion as below. Based on our review, nothing has come to our attention to cause us to believe that the financial statement do not give true and fair in accordance with the framework. What if you are given a qualified opinion? Based on our review, except for the effect of the matters, you cannot give any other wordings there. Already we have seen in the reporting chapter, which is described in the basis of conclusion, not based of opinion. Nothing has come to our attention that caused to believe that the financial statements are not true and fair. Adverse, based on our opinion, due to the significance of the matters, financial statement do not give true and fair view. And disclaimer conclusion, due to the significance of the matters described in the base of conclusion, we are unable to obtain evidence and we do not express any conclusion. Only thing is control F, conclusion, uh, opinion, find and replace, conclusion. Don't use the word called opinion. So you concluded you now. What type of opinion has to be given? In fact, if you see SA 700, your report and conclusion is one. 700 itself tells you, or 705 tells you the type of opinion. 700, see what has been told in 700, it is discussed here. This is 700. Agreed? First thing they start. Then this part is 705 and in 700 and 705 only it will continue and tell what is the format of the report, title, addressee. Here it is a separate requirement, there is no separate standard as such, it is a separate requirement. They say that, that look, you need to give a title and you should say independent review engagement. So somebody should know very clearly whether it is a review or an audit. Addressee depends upon the circumstances. Introductory para should have identified the title of the period, date and the period, same like audit. Refers to the summary of significant accounting policy, same like audit. State that financial statements are reviewed. There you have to state financial statements are audited. 
management responsibility okay your review opinion doesn't come here previously it was your audit report also was like this then amendment happened and the review came before introductory in this is become an opinion para management responsibility that they are responsible if the financial statements are under special purpose framework and you reviewed description of the framework purpose of the financial statement and in case of choice of the reporting framework you should also include responsibility that management was chosen this if there was a choice getting connected practitioner's responsibility nothing much not like our ss 700 so many things we have to give here we have to just say my responsibility is to express opinion and if there is any limitations review the engagement is and i have to give the description that look my engagement is a limited assurance engagement the practitioner has performed only the inquiry and analytical procedures so don't expect that review means what i have done you remember in the auditor's responsibility i have to give my what i have done the identification judgment this that and all no here my job is as a part of separate thing i tell that look i have done a limited assurance i can give only limited assurance i have done only inquiry and analytical procedure and procedures are substantially less than audit so it is not an op audit opinion no conclusion on the statement as a whole with reference to the framework when conclusion is modified change the heading appropriately qualified conclusion adverse conclusion a reference should be given with the ethical requirements like we have done audit as per the code of ethics of ICA. So we have done the review as per code of ethics of ICA. Date, sign, emphasis or other reporting responses. Now documentation, you need to document the nature, timing, extent of the procedure like who performed, who review. Correct. Results obtained and conclusions formed. Significant matters arising out of engagement, professional judgments reached, 330 only. Significant matters discussed with the management and TCWG. In case of inconsistency information, how it has been addressed. Yeah, you may have to remember this. They may ask you a question on the documentation part. Is this review is clear? Yeah, nothing special we found, no? Which one? Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a part of your audit quality control, no? It's SQC. Yeah. EQC, are, you know, they are not told. It's EQC is for audit. Like review in, okay, in SQC 1, have is your work is reviewed? Ah, that you need to specify here. Otherwise, you it's like a no maker and checker, no? So your work has to get reviewed by somebody else. EQC, are, if you want, you can do it. Not there required. But it's not called EQC, yeah? If you want one more review to happen, independent review to happen, you can do it, but not mandatory. Because big company, big audits, no? Review is also a dangerous thing. It's primarily quarterly reviews and all going to happen. So next, we will move on to the next chapter. Review of interim financial information by the independent auditor of the entity. Yes, what we are going to discuss here, interim financial information. It is the financial information that is prepared and presented as per the framework, which is either complete or condensed for a period shorter than the financial year. So this interim review can happen for a complete set of financial statement or for a com condensed set, summary financial statement. But the period is not full year. Period is for half year. Why? If it's period is full, full, full year audit would have been happened. No? So when the interim financial reports are done, like listed entities, as per SEBI regulation, every quarter they have to report their, their performance and all. Ah, now that has to get audited, not audited, sorry, reviewed by the statutory auditor, independent auditor of the entity. Now example quarterly reporting, a review is also contrast to an audit, not designated to obtain any assurance primarily done with the inquiry and analytical procedures already it's like see investigation chapter generic like SRS 2410 2400 is generic now you know, forensic accounting is more specific due diligence more specific like this it is more specific to interim reports a review contract okay the objective of the engagement to review interim financial information 
is to enable express conclusion that anything has come to the attention that is not as per the frame. Same objective. Now, how to achieve this objective? First, agreeing to the terms of the engagement, perform, check misstatement, check other information, communicating, reporting, departure, limitation on the scope, going concern and material. First, agree to the terms of engagement, auditor should agree, finish, no questions. Now, performing review of interim financial information, which includes understanding of the entity environment internal model, which other ways also you have as per your audit. Inquiry and analytical procedures, which is primarily what you are going to do and take the representation from the management. So, understanding of the entity, auditor need to have an understanding so that you can identify the types of misstatement and the possibilities and you can choose appropriate inquiries and analytical procedures. So, it is a risk based review, just like risk based audit. Some of the procedures performed to update the understanding, how do you get that understanding? Reading of the annual report, reading of the documentation, inquiring the changes in the management, check the significant changes in the internal control, check the management evaluation of fraud, any internal audit reports, actions taken, significant risk, materiality, generic answer. So how do you obtain that understanding or how do you upgrade your understanding? This is what they have asked. The first question may be on the understanding. Now related to the inquiry, what are the inquiries, what are the ordinarily you perform? Like reading of the minutes of the meeting to identify the matter, same in inquiry also we discussed. Considering the effect of previous year review on the modifications, because whether it is going to have the effect this year also. Communicating with the component auditors, because there can be a lot of sub, see you may be doing consolidation, quarterly reviewing, all concerns, quarterly review of the individual components are done by com component auditors, so you talk to them. Apply analytical procedures for unusual relationship. Reading and considering whether anything has come to your attention that the financial information is not prepared as per the framework. Okay, just go through it, financial statement and consider. Consider means read it very deeply to figure out any problems. See, when we read newspaper, okay, we consider the contracts. Read and consider the contract. What is the difference? In when you read the newspaper, it is a general reading. You are not trying to figure out any loopholes or different things. But when you read and consider a contract, you try to apply your mind and try to figure out the implications, what may happen, what can go wrong there. So reconcile with the books of account, general schedules. Obviously, that is the basic thing you need to do. Even for audit also, you have this financial reclosing has to be closing has to happen. Direct communication with the lawyers only if you suspect mistake. Because these are all part of additional procedures. And inquiring the members of the management for financial statement about whether it is presented as per the framework, changes in the policy, new transaction open, uncorrected misstatements are there, complex situations have come, fair value measurements are okay, related party transaction, some general, all standard related thing you write here also, knowledge of the fraud, no class, subsequent events, standards only, no, 500 series you write everywhere. These are all the things I am going to review, finish. Now they take the representation that they acknowledge their responsibility as per the preparation of internal controls and the framework. Uncorrected misstatements are not material, 450 representation. They have all disclosed all frauds, 240 representation. Assessment of the fraud is they have done. Known plausible, no clear, 250 representation. Significant subsequent event, 550 representation. Add two more, going concern representation and all, finish. Okay, but they are not required, they are not standard as not told. These are all the representations which you have to take mandatorily on your review engagement also. If you miss, it becomes a professional misconduct because you have not got the evidence what was told by the professional standard. Then how can you say tomorrow that my audit is as per the professional standard, sorry, review is as per the standards. Because you are quoting you know, in the report that my review is as per SRS 2410. Now evaluation of the misstatement, you have to evaluate individually and total also whether they are material and excess is your professional judgment. Okay, so here more you have to go and practice. Huh? Otherwise, it looks same, actually, it's the almost same. And we are seeing Q and also what type of questions will come. Nothing different here. I told you. Auditor's responsibility for other information, annual report. So here annual report will not be there, but some type of documentation you must be sending to say B and other people. 
Now you have to read the other information which is accompanied with this interim financial information for inconsistency. 720 also same says same thing. If you identify inconsistency, consider whether what needs amendment, whether financial report needs amendment or the other information needs amendment. If other information needs amendment and management refuses, you modify your report. If amendment is necessary in the other information but management refuses, then you include additional paragraph and tell, describe it, otherwise take appropriate actions. And if the material misstatement is not at all related to your financial information, take third party confirm conclusion and think of taking appropriate actions. So what I can say that even though this question comes, I repeat 720, wherever audit comes, change with the word with the audit with the review. Communication, yes, communicate all the material misstatement. If the management do not respond, communicate, complain them. TCW do not respond, you have to modify your report 260 also same, same thing. Effective to a communication not possible, modify. Or you consider withdrawal or resigning from the engagement also. See, you are the only one who are the auditor also, reviewer also. So for review, if they are not supporting you, then there is a danger, no? Withdraw, withdraw from audit also. Communicate the matters to the governance interest to the TCWG and fraud and non-clear has to be communicated. Okay, for your engagement also, section 143, subsection 12 is applicable. Last is the reporting. Give the appropriate heading, title, independent auditors, review, engagement or whatever. Depending upon the address you apply, identification, what is the title of the balance sheet, PNL date, report, management responsibility, auditor's responsibility, statement that we have made, uh, audited, reviewed as per SRE 2400, which includes inquiry and analytical procedures only, that it is very less in scope. We are not expressing any opinion. Don't think that you get an assurance there. And what is my conclusion? That nothing has come to my mind to believe that the financial information interim reporting is not true and fair as per the framework. Date, place, signature, membership number. Now departure from the financial reporting framework. Yes, auditor should express qualified opinion. If any matter comes to me mind that India 34 is say not followed, they have not done the proper disclosures. When the effect of departure is material and pervasive, yes, you have to give adverse. And modification should describe the nature, like why and the effect, reasons, basis for disclosure. And if the material is omitted, and if the uh, in the interim financial information, auditor should modify the report. And as per as practicable, should include that necessary information. Same like SS705. Okay, no doubts, no? None of the points. Now, limitation on the scope, don't accept it. So, first ask the management to remove it. If management communicate, re refuses, communicate with the TCWG. If they consider legal and regulatory to report, and if the auditor should consider, because you may have to report to RBI, you may have to report to central government, consider uh, uh, responsibility. And if you are going to disclaim a conclusion, first you resign. No, provide a reason why review cannot be completed. And other limitations on the scope, limitation on scope can occur due to circumstances other than imposed by the management. How many circumstances? When we talk about limitation on scope, there can be three circumstances. What are those? One is definitely limit imposed by the management. Then, what are the other two? Sorry? That is limitation imposed by the management, no? If management is not giving information, or okay, why why information is not provided? I'll ask you another question. Then you say, sir, records must have been destroyed by fire. That means situations beyond control of entity and auditor. Everybody's control. That can be limitation on scope, or because of the nature of auditor's procedures or auditor's appointment. That means limitation is because of me only. I'm not able to do it. I'm engaged or limitation by the company. Other than three reasons, there is no nothing called a fourth reason. So there can be cases where limitation is not imposed by the management, but auditor modifies the conclusion if uh, uh, limitation on scope is confined to one or more specific matters, which are material but not pervasive. Auditor may give qualified opinion on the audit of latest annual financial statement due to limitation on scope. In such case, consider limitation on scope still exists and implication of the review. What is this they are told? Wait. Auditor may have a qualified opinion on the audit of latest annual financial statement. Okay. 
in his annual financial statement he has given a qualified opinion because there was a limitation on the scope in such case consider because see 31st march you have been restricted now you have come to 30th june is that scope still exist and is that implication still there because same balances would have carry forward so that you may have to consider one point okay going concern and materiality if there is any material uncertainty of the going concern disclosures are made in interim financial reporting by adding emphasis of matter paragraph again that heading not there here that's why if we go back where is the heading called going concern here is there review no and assessment and all i cannot review here if such uncertainty is continued from the previous audit report he shall add a para highlighting such continuity if not adequately disclosed qualified or adverse opinion now what are the other considerations where any document containing interim financial information indicates that it is reviewed by the entity's auditor the review report should also be included in the document we have seen that summary financial statement whenever your summary financial statement you are sending to the intended users it should be always accompanied by the report of the document so similarly re reviewed balance sheet i will sign so reviewed balance sheet should be accompanied with my audit report other somebody will not understand now they say oh sir auditor has signed the balance sheet what does that indicate it is true and fair no it is a limited true and fair i don't know anything so always it should be accompanied if management has not included the review report you should seek legal advice it is a dangerous thing they are doing fraud there they have got a signature on your balance sheet you which you reviewed it and they are circulating everyone as if it is audited there is no difference from see from the balance sheet you will not come to know no whether you are reviewed or whether you are audited only from the report you will come to know so your always the audited balance sheet should be supported reviewed balance sheet should be supported with the review which, the which one interim. interim before the final but for uh, th uh, three interim reports you would have signed no june september ending december ending review happen ah that review what you will do for that that is already circulated no that review they are talking here annual report yes we assess standards we have discussed report that we indicated first quarter hmm beginning of the year new year review report ba sheet pnl interim reports ha huh. that quarter only not the annual report is different and that quarter there is a format okay your accounting standard india has given a format this quarter corresponding last quarter ytm till date last year ytm like this you have to give one report the yeah, auditor need to sign otherwise that credibility somebody will not get no that balance sheet is reviewed how somebody will know is reviewed others if i am not signing then why i should say along with that attach my report since i have signed it somebody should know it so also auditor shall consider the withdrawal from annual report also if you do this type of mischiefs with me i will withdraw from the annual audit also so interim financial information consisting of condensed set of financial statement does not include all the information and presume that the user will have access to the auditor statement does not include all the information okay because it will have a limited information and it's presume that yes we have already discussed in uh, summary financial statement that we circulate only summary they will if they want they have to access to the financial statement ifi in interim financial information should be include a statement that it has to be read in conjunction with the latest audited financial statement and if the management is going to refuse review the review report has to be that means even you might have reviewed the condensed financial statement also but you have to include one statement there yes with this we are done with the chapter on review